back to an evening of beer and books. I hope you all had a chance to work on the last writing prompt, which was, if you could invent a holiday, what would it be called and what would it be about? My daughter Neve had an opportunity to write about that and would like to share it with you. My holiday is called Hearing, and this is what I said. Hearing is one of my favorite holidays. It's on November 3rd. How many how my family celebrates it is we all sit together at the dining room table and there's a bunch of food that at least one person person likes. How do we know at least one person likes at, at least one person at the table likes it? Likes it? You may be asking. Well, on the 1st of November, the person who's cooking has to ask everyone who's coming who's coming to the celebration, one food that they want to be there. So this holiday is all about listening and respecting each other. And how it becomes a holiday is the best story ever. But I forget it, so Dad, can you tell me the hearing story? Sure. One day a little girl had a brilliant idea. Now, n n now, now no one knows what that idea was because no one listened to her to her. The next day she tried telling her father her idea. But he didn't listen. No one listened. She continued to tell people people her idea, but still no one listened. She kept trying until one day she gave up. This holiday celebrates the bravery of Camille, the girl the girl's name was and this holiday is on November 3rd because in no, um, in October there's Halloween. And for Halloween, you dress up and you pretend to be someone or something you're not. And for hearing, you're supposed to be yourself and tell the truth because this holiday is, is about listening. And if you don't tell the truth, you get bad luck. Thank you, Dad. Don't you just love hearing? Thank you so much for sharing that brilliant idea, Neve. I love the idea of us taking more time to listen and truly hear one another. All right, we are on to chapter two of Sammy Keys and the Hotel Thief. Let us begin. Oh, and please stay tuned to the end of the reading for the next writing prompt. The only thing I could find in Graham's closet to use on the big guy was an umbrella. It was one of the old kind, big and black with a nice fat point. I sat there waiting, holding the thing like a spear. And when Graham's finally opened the closet door, well, I was so sure it was the guy from the Heavenly that I almost jabbed her right in the stomach. She jumps back, Samantha Joe, what in the world? I peek around her and whisper, who was that? It's Marissa. She yanks the umbrella away from me and puts it back in the closet. Marissa, what's she doing here? Grams just shrugs. Go ask her yourself. I go charging out to the living room and there's Marissa, kind of dancing around with her feet pointing toward each other, chewing on a fingernail. What's wrong? She starts dancing even faster. It's Mikey. We were playing video games at the mall and all of a sudden I turned around and he was gone. I can't find him anywhere. Mom's supposed to be home in half an hour and if she finds out, okay, okay, did you check the pet store? She says, the pet store? Like it's some brainstorm of the, I, of the very first place she should have looked. Come on. I yank on her sweatshirt. Hang on, would ya? Then I go find Grams and say, would you check the hall? But it's dinner time. I look over at Marissa, who's chewing on a nail. It's important, Grams. She thinks about this for a minute, then sighs. Well, okay. She peeks down at Mrs. Graybill's door and looks back with a smile. Don't be long. So we tiptoe past Miss, Mrs. Graybill's place, then race to the fire escape stairs. Now, I don't always use the fire escape stairs. Sometimes I use the regular stairs, and sometimes I even use the elevator. It depends. The elevator's okay to use if I'm leaving and not coming back, like if I'm going to spend the night at Marissa's. The regular stairs I'd use all the time, only they come out right by the mailboxes, and it seems like someone always sees me. 
With the fire escape, all I have to worry about is that someone's going to notice the wad of gum I put in the jam to keep it from locking. And so far, no one has. So we go banging down the stairs and pretty soon we're running past the dumpsters across the parking lot to the main street and over to the mall. Since the pet store's way down at the far end of the mall, we decide to first check for Mikey at the arcade just in case he's looking for Marissa. Mikey's kind of hard to miss. He's what Graham calls a butterball. He's got curly black hair that never looks combed, even what, even if it's been combed. He's short, even for someone who's only eight years old, and fat, really fat. Mrs. McKenzie says he'll grow out of it, but in the meantime, he's stocking up on candy bars. Anyhow, we check the arcade, but he's not there, and as we're running toward the elevator, I ask, did you have him paged? Paged? I duck past people on the escalator. Yeah, paged. You know, Mikey McKenzie, please report to the arcade immediately. Your sister's looking for you. She catches up to me. You can do that? Sure, people do it all the time. Just then the mall loudspeakers blare. Good afternoon, shoppers. This is Rock and Rec coming at you from KRQK Rock Party Booth. We're set up right outside Jammin' Records on the south end of the first level, and we've been here all weekend giving away prizes. We've only got a few hours to go on this back to school weekend, and we've got and we've still got mountains to give away. CDs, calculators, sweatshirts, a five in one Kanga book bag. You name it, we're trying to give it away. Stop by the booth and register. It's fast, it's free, and you'll still have time. That's the KRQK party booth right outside Jammin' Records. Come on down. Marissa stops moving. That was rock and wreck. I yank on her and say, we're in a panic about Mikey, remember? But that's rock and wreck. He's here. I pull her off the escalators. So we'll meet him after we check the pet store. Come on. We race down the mall and we're flying past the juicers when Marissa squeaks to a stop. Hey, look, my cousin's working. Maybe he's seen Mikey. Brandon's a nice guy. He's in high school and he's on the swim team, so his hair's turned this really shiny red, but it used to be black. He's really friendly and even invites Marissa and me to his swim meet sometimes. Most kids in high school won't even talk to you if you're in junior high. They act like you're a baby or pretend you're not even there. Anyhow, we run up to the counter and Marissa says, Brandon, have you seen Mikey? He was supposed to stick with me at the arcade and I don't know what happened. He took off. Brandon smiles. You can't miss Mikey, he points and says. He was headed that away about 20 minutes ago. Then he says, hiya, Sammy. How's life? I don't know why, but whenever Brandon talks to me, I wind up looking at my feet, not knowing what to say. So there I am, looking down, popping the rubber on my high tops, and what do I say? Fine. Brilliant. Huh? Fine. Marissa tugs on my arm and says to Brandon, if you see him, tell him to go back to the arcade and wait for me, okay? Brandon waves and says, will do, and off we go to the pet store. The pet store used to sell real pets, you know, like dogs. Now they only sell mice and birds and your occasional box turtle, those and fish rows and rows of fish. I don't care what anyone says. Fish don't belong in a pet store. They are not pets. I could go my whole life without seeing another fish bubbling away in a tank. Mike couldn't. He can watch fish for hours. For a while, there he kept asking the girl at the register if he could please feed the fish, but she always said no. I guess she was too busy reading her fashion magazine to be bothered making a roly-poly guy with chocolate all over his face happy. She told him they were on a schedule, if you can believe that. Anyhow, we go charging into the pet store and there's the girl behind the register reading a magazine. Marissa runs up and says, have you seen my brother? The girl just nods toward the fish tank without even looking at us. Mikey's there all right, sitting on the floor with a tub of popcorn watching the fish go back and forth. Marissa hauls him to his feet. You're supposed to stay with me. Popcorn goes flying everywhere, and Mikey's so surprised he starts choking. He tries to talk, but you can't understand a word he's saying because he's too busy coughing. Marissa shakes him. Don't you ever do that again. Finally, he spits out. But you said I could. I did not. Mikey wipes the popcorn off his face with the back of his hand and says real loud, Did too. Marissa grabs him by the arm. And look at all this stuff. You've had enough junk food to last you a year. Have not. 
Marissa starts picking wrappers off the floor. A Reese's, a Snickers, no, two Snickers, an ice cream cone. She does a double take at the napkin and freezes. You had a double dynamo? Mikey looks from side to side like he's about to bolt. You were supposed to stick with me and you went clear out to Main Yards? Mikey looks straight at her. I didn't, honest. Oscar had his ice cream cart right outside jamming records. I barely even had to go outside. Marissa squints at him a minute, thinking, finally, she finishes picking up his mess and says, did you see the KRQK booth? Mikey shrugs, yeah. Did you see Rock and Rick? Mikey shrugs again, I think. Well, what did he look like? I don't know, kind of dumb. Dumb? What do you mean, kind of dumb? Rock and Rick's the coolest. She turns to me and rolls her eyes. Let's go down there and see if we can meet him. So off we all go, down the escal escalator and over to the KRQK booth. There's music playing, all right, and there are two ladies in the booth helping people register, but there's nobody who looks like he could be Rock and Rick. Marissa finally goes up and asks, and one of the ladies says, Oh, he should be back in a little bit. Maybe 20 minutes? Marissa makes a face. Darn, I can't wait that long. I've got to get home. Me too. Grams is probably holding dinner for me. Hey, you want to meet me on the steps at school tomorrow? She laughs. I get nervous just thinking about it. I say, sure. Because about the last thing I feel like doing is swimming through a sea of 7th and 8th graders all by myself. I wave goodbye and head across the mall, and I'm busy thinking about what 7th grade is going to be like when for some reason I look back over my shoulder. Then I look again, because coming straight at me is a man with bushy brown hair and a beard. My heart about shoots through my chest, and the next thing you know, I'm running. I race down the main corridor and then take a quick left and duck into the bookstore, and I'm squatting down by the newspapers, peeking out the window, when here he comes walking by. And I'm trying to figure out if there's, if he's the hotel thief or not, when all of a sudden he stops right in front of the bookstore. My heart's whacking its way out of my chest and my legs are feeling really wobbly. But then the next thing you know, he's kissing this lady and the two of them walk off pushing their baby stroller. I stayed in the bookstore a minute trying to quit shaking and when I finally caught my breath, I go up and started hurrying. I got up and started hurrying home. And I guess I was still worrying about who was behind me because I kept looking over my shoulder. And when I turned a corner, I bumped right into a man saddled up with shopping bags. I said, I'm sorry, but he didn't say a word. He just pulled down the bill of his ball cap, picked up his packages, and walked away with his eyes to the ground. I watched him go, and when he was out of sight, I kind of shook my head and how it headed out of the mall. And I was just thinking that I'd be back before Grams had a chance to finish fluffing the rice when I noticed police cars parked out in front of the Heavenly Hotel. And with all the commotion at the hotel, well, there was no way I could just pass by without taking a peek inside. That's the end of chapter two. Tomorrow, we will continue on with chapter three. And in the meantime, we have another writing prompt. This time, the idea is to identify a character from either a book or a movie whom you'd like to meet and write about what that, would, what that encounter, what that meeting would be like, what you would talk about and what you would do together. I hope you get a few minutes to think about that and write down your thoughts. And we'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Have a good night.